Hi everybody, it's Richard McMunn from the Psychometric Testing Company, MyPsychometricTest.com, and I'm back again with another exciting IQ and Aptitude Test Questions and Answers video tutorial. So we're going to go through a number of test questions that you're likely to get asked during your IQ and Aptitude Test. I'll give you some sample tips on how to pass them and then get you guys to have a go at them yourself. So before I get into the IQ and Aptitude Test Questions, a very warm welcome to this tutorial. As always, my name is Richard McMahon, that's me there on the right hand side. And in this video, we're going to focus specifically on IQ and Aptitude Tests. Um, and I'll teach you how to pass them. So as always, please do subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button below this video. And if you do enjoy the questions, I'd very much appreciate it if you gave the video a like. That always motivates me to create more content. Okay, let's get straight into the questions. First sample question. So I'll talk you through this spatial reasoning type question and then get you guys to have a go at them yourself. So you see on the left, you have shape one and on the right, we have shape two. So the question is, we have to rotate shape one clockwise 90 degrees and shape two, we have to rotate it clockwise again, 270 degrees. And then we have to decide from the options A, B, C and D, which um, position the shapes will be in once they have been rotated. So let's break this down in real simple terms. So if we go back to the shapes, we can see that shape one has to be rotated clockwise 90 degrees. So that is shape one as it stands, we're all agreed. Now, if we rotate it clockwise, i.e. the direction that a clock would go to the right, and we move it one space round, that's 90 degrees, that is where the black dot will end up. So we know we can do it in our mind, that's where the black dot will end up. Now, shape two. We have to rotate clockwise 270 degrees, so we all agree that's where the shape is right now. Now if 90 degrees is one turn, there are three 90s in 270, so we have to move it three turns. So in a full turn is 360, in three turns 270, and in two there's 180. So if we move it three turns, that's where it is when it starts, and that's where the black dot is when it ends up. So if we go back to shape one and shape two, Shape one, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Shape two, 270 degrees clockwise. If we have a look at the answer options, we can see that B is the only correct answer option. Therefore, we would select B. Now, obviously, that's taken about a minute to go through. You'd have to work a lot quicker than that. And on that basis, I want to get you guys to have a go at about three of these questions now. So now it's your turn. Please put your answer to question one in the comments section below the video and we'll come on here each day and mark them for you to see if you're getting them correct. Now, what we will do on the right hand side there, you will see a red timer. Now, by the time that takes to get to the bottom, that's when I'm going to move on. So you've only got about 10 seconds to answer this question, which in fairness to you guys is quite tough. But if you can answer these in 10, questions, 10 seconds, you're doing brilliantly. OK, here we go. So you've got shape one and shape two. Shape one, you have to rotate clockwise 90 degrees. And shape two, you have to rotate the same way clockwise 180 degrees. So there are your answer options. Is it A, B, C or D? Don't forget to put your answer in the comments section below for marking. Here's the timer. Okay, fantastic. Hope you got that correct. Um, let's move on. Have another go. So have a go at the same question. Please put your answer to question two in the comment section below for marking. Here we go. So you've got shape one in that position, shape two in that one. And what you have to do is rotate shape one clockwise 360 degrees and shape two, you have to rotate it anti-clockwise the other way, 180 degrees. So a little bit tougher. Here's your answer options. Is it A? B, C or D. Put your answer please in the comments section below for marking and here's your timer. Okay, fantastic. And if you are getting those answers done in that 10 seconds, you're doing brilliantly. Let's have a go one more. So please put your answer to question three in the comments section below and we'll move on to another type of IQ and aptitude test question. So here it is. Shape one in that position, shape two. This is a little bit tougher. Let's see how you get on with this. So shape one, you have to rotate anti-clockwise 360 degrees, but shape two, you have to rotate it clockwise 45 degrees. So think about that. Here are your answer options. Is it A, B, C, or D? Please put your answer to 
question three in the comment section below for marking and here's your time. Brilliant, okay, well done. Let's move on to a different type of question now. Here we go, another kind of IQ and aptitude test question. Which one letter will finish the word and begin the second word in each set? So we have two words that, well, we actually have four words. You've got B-A-C and then something, and then something I-C-K, and then B-A-R something, and then something I-double-S. So we have to work out what one letter will go there and there. The same letter, not two different ones, the same one. And if we think about it, the only one that would actually go there to make those four words is the letter K. So you've got back and kick, and then you've got bark and kiss. Okay, sounds easy. Let's see how you get on. So please put your answer to question four in the comments section below the video for Mark, and I'll get you to do a couple of these. So the same thing, timer on the right-hand side. I'm going to give you a little bit more time on this because I think it's a bit more trickier. Which one letter will finish the word and begin the second word in each set? Here we go. So you've got R-E-N something, something E-A-L, G-O-L something, and then something I-A-L. Here's your timer. So again, I hope you're getting these, you're finding them useful. Don't forget to put your answer in the comment section below. Let's move on to another one. Please put your answer to question five in the comment section below the video for marking. Here we go. Which one letter will finish the word and begin the second word in each set? G-U-R something, something G-L-Y. M-E-N something, something N-D-O. And here's your time. Okay, brilliant, awesome stuff. Let's ramp it up a little bit, make them a little bit more tougher. So, the clock below currently reads 3 a.m., so that's 3 in the morning. How many degrees will the large minute hand have turned when the time reaches 3 p.m.? Okay, so I'll just quickly repeat that, and then I'll show you how to tackle this. The clock below reads 3 a.m. How many degrees will the large minute hand have turned when the time reaches 3 p.m.? Is it A, 4,320 degrees, B, 360 degrees, C, 180 degrees, D, 90 degrees, or E, 270 degrees? So, that is the large minute hand, as you probably know. And the other one, on the number three, is the small hour hand. Okay? So, when that large hour hand turns one hour, that's 360 degrees, which means that each hour is 30 degrees. So, just to recap, one hour equals 360 degrees of the large minute hand. It's saying it's now 3 a.m. So by the time it gets to 3 p.m., 12 hours will have passed. On that basis, if there's 360 degrees in one hour, that means 12 hours times 360 degrees equals 4,320 degrees. So the correct answer, therefore, would be A. So all you need to do to tackle these is to know how many degrees in a full turn and then how many degrees in one hour, and you can work it out. But they're quite tricky, so let's see how you get on. Here we go. So please put your answer to question six in the comment section below the video for marking. Now these are tougher. I'm gonna to give you a little bit more time. Now if you do need to pause the video, it's absolutely fine. The important thing is you get the answer correct. So the clock below reads 3 p.m. How many degrees will the small hour hand, the small one, have turned when the time reaches 8 p.m.? So the clock below reads 3 p.m. How many degrees will the small hour hand have turned when the time reaches 8 p.m.? Is it A, 210 degrees, B, 640, C, 1270, D, 150, or E, 270? And here is your timer. Awesome stuff. Hope you're still with us and I hope you're enjoying these. Let's move on to another one. So please put your answer to question seven in the comments section below the video for marking. Here we go. The clock below reads 3 p.m. How many degrees will the large minute hand have turned when the time reaches 9 a.m.? Tricky one. Tricky one. Here we go. A, 108 degrees. B, 7,560 degrees. C, 1,080 degrees. 
D, 6,480, or E, 270. So the clock below reads 3 p.m. How many degrees will the large hand have turned when the time reaches 9 a.m.? That's a tricky one. If you get this in the timer, you're doing absolutely fantastic. Here we go. Okay, fantastic. Really good stuff. Okay, if you'd like more of these kind of test questions, I hope you do. Um, if you would like some more, then you can click the link below the video or go to my website, mypsychometrictest.com, which will then, I'll quickly show you, will take you through to this website here, My Psychometric Test. You can get free access. You can get access to our um, test for 30 days for free of charge. doesn't cost anything. And you get an abundance of test questions or with timers to help you pass any kind of psychometric test. Don't forget to say hi um, in the comments section below the video. I absolutely love making these videos for you guys. Um, and, and yeah, don't forget to subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And um, yeah, I wish you all the very best, guys, in your pursuit to passing your IQ and aptitude tests. I've been Richard McMahon, and thank you very much for watching and subscribing. All the best.